Um, today I want to go over this article I read in yesterday's paper, uh, which is why I'm wearing the glasses. Fight cancer with exercise. Isn't that a fun one? Okay, now this is, now first of all, I have not read the whole article. Okay, we're going to do this together. I read like the first paragraph and thought, oh, this is going to be a joy. It looks like this is part of the Dr. Oz thing that they print up every week. Um, Health Watch by Mehmet, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, Oz and Mike Royson. Not sure if I pronounced that right either. Okay, fight cancer with exercise. Um, if you've been diagnosed with cancer, now this is after you're diagnosed with cancer, not to prevent cancer, but after you've been diagnosed with cancer. If you've been diagnosed with cancer, get ready for a new RX. It may surprise you. Exercise. Okay, and it says, building on data from around the world, the Clinical Oncology Society of Australia brought together 20 health organizations to create a position statement saying, exercise is to be embedded as part of standard practice in cancer care and to be viewed as an adjunct therapy that helps counteract the adverse effects of cancer and its treatment. I mean, we know exercise is good for you. They've been telling us since we were born that exercise is good for you. You know, we used to have to do that in school. The, what was it, the president's fitness thing that you had to like run between pylons and swing on bars and stuff. Um, Okay, let's see. Furthermore, withdrawing from exercise after diagnosis or while undergoing treatment actively harms cancer patients' chances of survival. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm not gonna survive then. <laughs> of course, it's not like I exercised before I got cancer either, so. Um, Let's see, let's read a little bit more. Um, let's see. If we could turn the benefits of cancer into a pill, it would be demanded by patients, prescribed by every cancer specialist, and subsidized by government. It would be seen as a major breakthrough in cancer treatment. That was a direct quote from Professor Prue Cormy of Let's see, she's the chair of the Society's Exercise and Cancer Care Group. So I guess she has a stake in this. <laughs> okay, how does it help? Fights fat. I'm not gonna argue with that one. Okay, we know that. And it says we know cancer cells love fat for fuel. I still find it ironic that I didn't get cancer until after I lost all the weight, but okay. Although I did get it in the breast, which is like the whole fatty portion of my body now, so who knows. Let's see, overweight and obesity are linked to the development of many cancers, okay. Um, in 2012, in the United States, about 28,000 new cases of cancer in men and 72,000 in women were due to being overweight or obese. Okay. If it can help trigger a cancer, it may also sustain it. I don't know about that. Um, exercise, along with a healthy diet, reduces body fat. Proven, we know that. Strengthens the heart, we know that. That's a fact. Chemotherapy and radiation can be hard on the cardiovascular system. Okay. Like I said, I'm dead. Okay. Appropriate exercise may help overcome the side effects. All right. But you're talking side effects, not the cancer itself. There's a difference. Um, helps dispel stress. Okay. That I do know. <laughs> Where I used to work, I'd get really stressed out and my boss would tell me, go to the gym. And you know, he'd like, he was really into exercise and being fit. Um, you know, the guy played soccer and, and 
or as he called it, football, because he was a Canadian. But um, he would he really pushed for like self management kind of thing and. You know, I only had an hour for lunch because I was an hourly employee, but he didn't care. He's like, you know, make it up somewhere along the line. Just go do what you need to do. Get the stress out. You know, if you need to take two hours, take two hours. It's okay. And so that was really cool. And so a bunch of us would go, at, you know, a group of us would go to the gym at lunch and we'd work out. And I just did get on the treadmill and go because I didn't know how to do any of the other machines. <laughs> So I'd just get on the treadmill and I'd just walk my little heart out and and it really does help. So I know that. Okay. Um, diagnosis and treatment of cancer create a lot of personal and caregiver stress. Duh. And chronic elevation of stress hormones causes body-wide inflammation. I don't know about inflammation. I know it causes, you know, I mean stress. Yeah. National Cancer Institute says, quote, evidence from experimental studies does not suggest that psychological stress can affect a tumor's ability to grow and spread, unquote. Okay. <laughs> so, stress does not affect the tumor's ability to grow and spread, but they're saying that exercise helps dispel stress, which creates cancer. <laughs> exercise is an effective way to get rid of built up stress hormones and body-wide tension. Yes. Also reduces inflammation and helps create an environment that fights off cancer instead of nurturing it. I don't know about that, but do it with a buddy. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Um, reduces fatigue. Fatigue is a side effect of treatment. As a side effect of treatment, I realized I kind of ran everything together there, is very common. Uh, yeah, no kidding. The National Comprehensive Cancer Network um, states that, quote, research has dot 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 demonstrated that those who exercised regularly had 40 to 50 percent less fatigue, the primary complaint during treatment, unquote. You know, and that's kind of what they tell you. It's like if you get out and exercise, you get rid of the tiredness instead of getting more tired. From exercising, you actually get rid of the the tired, the fatigue, the, you know. So um, that's why in my video about what to do when you have the blahs and you, you're just so tired and you can't do anything, one of my suggestions was just get out and take a little bit of a walk, even if it's just to the end of the driveway and back, you know. That was one of my suggestions on how to get over that. Um, okay, so, oh, protects, so we're back to exercise and just now. Protects bone and muscle strength. Chemo and some radiation can erode bone density. No duh. Making sure to get regular physical activity um, and eating a balanced diet with plenty of calcium are essential for bone health. They've also been telling us that since we were kids as well. Some of this is just, I, most of this is like, duh. You know, um, I, I guess they're speaking to the 3% the of people who've never heard of it. I don't know. Okay, what to do? Get expert guidance. <laughs> you know, they always put that disclaimer in there. You know, talk to your doctor. Get an okay from your doctor before you do this. You know. <laughs> You want to work with your oncologist, an exercise physiologist or physiotherapist to determine what you can safely do and to help you transition to exercising independently. Um, start slowly and progress over days and weeks. A five minute walk is far, far better than no walk at all. 
So, you know, and I think we all know that too. It's like you start with the walk to the end of the driveway and back. You know, and then you build up. Pretty soon you're going around the block, and then you're going down to the park and back, and you know, then you're doing marathons. Not me, but you. <laughs> um, keep a daily journal to track your progress. Not me. <laughs> I've got my Fitbit. That's about as much tracking as I'm going to do. <laughs> um, your goal. Society, the society, the society, recommends you aim for at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity weekly. Okay, so 150 minutes, if you break that down to daily, oh God, I have to do math in my head. You know, I used to be so good at math and now, um, so you're looking at, God, I cannot think. 150 minutes divided by seven is going to be like 20, 25 minutes a day maybe. That's a good walk. It, but that's moderate intensity. So, you know, in my neighborhood is hilly. So I guess that would be a moderate intensity. Um, but now that my dog can't walk, I don't even want to walk. I, you know, without him, it, there's just no point. Um, let's see, okay, 150 minutes of moderate intensity, intensity exercise weekly, along with two to three sessions of resistant exercise, resistance exercise, using stretchy bands or even your own body weight. Hmm. From there, as you put treatment behind you, you may increase your activities. Okay, I'm sorry, but um, hooey. <laughs> Exercise is good for you. I admit that. You know, I know that. I've always known that. It doesn't mean I'm going to do it, but I've known it. But saying that it's going to basically cure your cancer. I mean, that's basically what they're saying in here, fighting your cancer with exercise, that it's going to help shrink your, your cancer cells. No, uh-uh. It will make you feel better. It may help you physically, but it's not going to do anything to the cancer itself. Uh, that I don't believe. Uh, they're gonna have to show me a lot more than just this little article by Oz. Um, tell me what you think. Put it in the comments below and tell me what you think about this because, yeah. Um, the other article here, teen vaping is risky. No kidding. I mean, you know, that you're smoking. Vaping is smoking. So, yeah. Um, why onions make you cry and how to take the itch out of mosquito bites. Okay, so very, I don't even know what to call it. So, um, I dropped my thing, hang on. Um, so, let me know what you thought of the article down below and if there's anything else you want me to cover, look at my, oh, it's flapped up that way. Has it been like that the whole time? Jeez. Uh, <laughs> there was one video I saw where my earring was like sticking out like that the whole time. Um, so, you know, if there's anything else you want me to cover, you know, put it down below or shoot me an email and hit the like button. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe and hit that little notification bell so you know when the new videos come out. And I will see you later. Bye-bye.